Today I'm going to show you how body shocks used to fix dents before Bondo was invented. And for those of you who have been asking, we're also going to show this little guy in action, explain what it is and what it does. Also, I don't have any content to feed the algorithm with this week, so I figured we just kind of make something up and uh, if I don't uh, post videos regularly, YouTube gets all upset with me, so, you know, they like quantity over uh, quality with the videos, so we gotta, gotta keep them happy, I guess. So our victim today is this 1936 Chevy pickup. We already have a full series on fixing that fender. A three part video or four part video, I don't remember, but uh, we're just gonna be doing the same thing on this fender. Just got a fun little repair to start out with here. Um, I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to this. Like I said, we're just kind of feeding the YouTube algorithm here. So here's what we got. This whole fender is quite poor. See this, we're not, I just don't have time to get into that right now. But uh, ideally we should be working this whole fender all at once. But again, you know, do as I say, not as I do. We'll, we'll make it work. I'll make it work, whatever. Make more work for myself. So. Really hard to see on the camera here, but we got a whole bunch of damage in this corner. See that dent there, kind of a ridge there. There's actually a big dent here that I kind of popped out with a rubber mallet a few years ago. and Obviously, you can see didn't really get it out all that good, so we got to fix that. With this little guy here. And then we've also got a crease here, and I'm probably, because there's so much damage on the rest of this, I'm probably just going to rough this out. But we'll take these out right to finished. So as you can see here, we kind of marked out our highs and lows. I just ran a sanding block over it with some 80 or 120. I can't remember what's on here, but anyways, see we've got a ridge here. All these bare metal areas are high spots. All the spots with paint in them are all low, so we a crease here. A low here, very shallow low, and then this is all mangled up, and then this is pretty self-explanatory. You can actually see that on camera easy enough, so we didn't do anything there. But that's kind of what we're working with. That's what we got. We got to get all this ironed out. So we're not going to cover a whole lot of the actual dent bumping. Like I'm going to film all of it, but uh, I've already got videos on that explaining all that, and. Uh, there's also, you know, probably hundreds of videos on YouTube as well. It's the first 90% of this is the easy part. It's the last 10% that kind of gets people hung up. What I'm going to show you is it's actually pretty easy though, and it, it can be faster than using this stuff. So, um, with a little practice at least. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We'll just dive right in here, start knocking this all flat. And uh, I guess I'll just... Well, we'll just make it up as I go, I have no idea. We'll just begin by using our dollies and our hammers and uh, our spoon as a slapper and just whatever we got laying around here. We're going to bump up the low spots and uh, knock down the high spots. Um, probably start with the worst of the damage and just, uh, just go to town here and see what happens.
This is just a spoon that I've been using as a uh, slapper. Um, basically, all that is just a just a hammer with a wider contact area. So, anytime you're doing like large kind of ripples and stuff, you got more surface contact than with this. So it just moves the metal around a little bit uh, cleaner and faster and whatever. Um, this is, I don't know what brand this is. I bought it used, but uh, you can just make something similar out of an old leaf spring or a uh, file or whatever you got laying around. So kind of a handy little tool. using a sanding block uh, with some I think this is 120 because I'm out of 80 normally is 80 but whatever doesn't really matter and just using that as kind of my guide to mark my progress see where my highs and lows are at highs show up uh, shiny the lows show up as obviously painted surfaces still so just kind of handy for marking our progress as we go So I got this little tool here. This is called a bullseye pick. They're available in different lengths and sizes and what have you. Bought this one from Eastwood Tools. This one's actually broken. It's supposed to have a little spring that lets it go back, but uh, it still kind of works. Anyways, so you can see there's this little top here and then this area here. And when you bring that up, so this bumps up from the bottom and uh, raises up your low spots and uh, this is like your bullseye I guess that tells you you know exactly where it's coming up so instead of trying to guess with a hammer and whatever this is just kind of an accurate way now they call this a, a bullseye pick because normally these come with a super pointed end but uh, I've blunted it off so that I can raise up bigger low areas. Also, I found the pick that these come with, they're just way, way, way too sharp for doing anything on sheet metal. You could do a lot of damage with it uh, if you were left it that sharp. So I ground it all flat and uh, it works a lot better for me. Anyways, we'll uh, show you how this works here. So see we're low here. So when I squeeze this, it's going to pop that up.
I sanded over this with the dual action sander. Not really a necessary step. Uh, it's mainly just for the video, just to put a different uh, sanding pattern in it or whatever, so that uh, this next step will show up on camera better, I'm hoping. But uh, anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to a uh, Vixen file. See, like that. And we're using a adjustable file holder, so what we can do is we can turn this turnbuckle here, and if we're doing like a uh, reverse curve or whatever, it'll uh, get in there and do that, or we can straighten it out so it's flat. Um, if I'm doing a flat panel like a door or something, I have a hardwood file holder that I'll use instead of this because this can kind of give you a false reading sometimes, but for doing these curved panels, this works a lot better. And then go like that because this is a curved fender. We're going to put some curve in it so we're not just, you know, we have a larger contact surface with the file. And basically this is just going to tell us, you know, what's going on with this panel. The sanding block is nice, but it, it gets us close, but this just gets us, this just gets us that uh, last little bit there. Traditionally, you would just exclusively use this, and that's the way I was thought to do it, but uh, I've been kind of trying to minimize the use of this lately. Um, I know people always have concerns, oh, you're removing metal, it's a file or whatever. Well, all we're really doing is just putting a scratch pattern in here so we can see what's going on. We're not really trying to remove, you know, we're not trying to like file down the high spots or anything because obviously then you'll thin the metal, but um, if you're really concerned about this, take a piece of flat metal and sit there and file on it until you try it, until you make a hole and you'll be at it for a while. I can tell you that right now. We're just going to stop talking here and we'll uh, continue this later. So I'm just going to kind of go at it from different angles here and just uh, put a file pattern in here. I'm going to try to, uh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to change direction with the file. I'm trying not to just, you know, go in one straight line. Just like if you were uh, blocking out a car or whatever, you don't just sand the block in one straight line. You kind of work it across. Uh, I think it's supposed to be at like a 30 degree angle or whatever. But uh, if you want to get out your angle finder and uh, figure that out, you go right ahead. But, you know, this isn't rocket science here. So you can see I've used my... Vixen file here to put a scratch pattern in here. Now we're not trying to like shave down high spots or do anything like that. We're just kind of trying to make sure that our surface is uniform. And you can see just by using the block and hammering and dollying and whatever, um, it's very tedious, but uh, it got us pretty close because as you can see, the file is touching almost the entire surface. There's still a few very minor surface defects that we can now go back and correct. See, we missed a little low spot there. And uh, just, uh, there's another little guy right there. And uh, so we'll just take our uh, bullseye pick again and we'll uh, 
carefully bump those up and then we'll do another pass with the file make sure it's all smooth and level and uh, that should be that Try to work the file in both directions so I have a scratch pattern one way and then I'll put a scratch pattern the other way because sometimes you can uh, you can miss things it'll uh, read read the panel incorrectly I guess you could say So we got a consistent scratch pattern all across this panel, so that's telling us that we've managed to remove all the damage. And uh, you can use a, like Dicom or paint or whatever as a guide coat, but typically I just use the scratches in the metal. And just once it's feeling all kind of uniform, then I know I'm uh, I know I'm in the zone. So next we'll uh, remove these file marks, and then uh, that'll be that. So to remove these file marks, I'm using a seven inch sander polisher. You know, I was using eight inch. Uh, you don't want to use a tiny little grinder. You want to use a big, big surface area. You use a tiny little grinder and you'll dig in and you'll uh, gouge the metal and damage it. So uh, we do want to be very careful with this. Um, we want to, we're working it across the panel in a consistent motion to remove these file marks. We don't want to just sit in one spot and we don't want to dig it in or you know, do anything that's going to damage the metal. So you also got to be very careful. Stay away from this body line here. I'm using uh, 80 grit on this this pad. You don't want to use anything uh, too coarse. You know, 36 grit has no place going anywhere near metal. Uh, it's just way too coarse. You'll you'll damage the metal very quickly. So I'm just going to get to sand it out here, and then we'll uh, sand it down. Have a look.
So there's the completed panel. I just uh, shine it up a bit with some uh, 180 grit. You can see all the damage has been removed. And we did it all using uh, hand tools. So we'll just shine it up a little bit here. With some wax and grease remover. See, we're all straight again. That panel is now ready for primer and paint. Well, other than all the horrific damage that we've chosen to ignore and this little thing here. But uh, anyways, this is the way dents were repaired and back before Bondo was invented. So this would have been done in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, possibly a little bit in the 70s and then it's kind of something that's kind of been lost to time I guess. You know, it was done by body shops, it was done by coach builders, it was done at the factory when they had damaged panels on the assembly line. There was somebody, you know, fixing stuff like this. So that's kind of still works today. It's a little uh, not Pebble Beach quality, but uh, this is a Saskatchewan farm truck. So this is an acceptable repair. If you're new around here, all I do is fix garbage. So we don't uh, do any high quality show stuff. So. Before we sign off, I do want to clear up a few myths and misconceptions about this because, uh, well, it's, it's something that's, I guess, been almost lost to time and, uh, you know, there's people who talk garbage about it or whatever and uh, I guess those people either they, they never tried it or they tried it and, you know, couldn't figure it out in the five minutes that they spent on it and so automatically it goes in the waste bin or whatever. This is actually a pretty effective uh, tool here, as with any tool. It uh, it can be used properly and uh, does an excellent job. If it's abused, then uh, not so much. Now the first thing, I guess, is people see this and they think, well, you're just like dramatically thinning out the metal as soon as you take a file to it and, oh no, you're going to make a hole or whatever. Well, I was taught how to do this when I was 20 years old. I had never worked on a car, like done body work on a car, I guess. Um, and I, I wasn't allowed to, uh, to even use Bondo until I could actually you know, I guess metal finish a dent using this. And we were doing this on 22 gauge sheet metal when I was learning. And uh, 22 gauge sheet metal is basically the same thickness of metal that's on modern cars, so it's super thin. And uh, nobody in my class, I don't think, actually managed to file a hole in the metal. And we were, you know, back then we were probably getting pretty aggressive with it. so. You know, you really got to work at this to actually considerably thin the metal or even, you know, damage it. Like your your arms are getting tired. You know, this is, this fender is 19 gauge, which is uh, pretty thick, as is uh, most cars of the, uh, the air were 19 gauge. So now you did see I was using this block. And the reason for that is I'm just trying to, uh, I guess, improve uh, my skill set here a bit. So. I've started using the block first before I use the file and the block just gets gets it close because if we if we start out using the file right away then uh, we do obviously I mean it is a file so we are removing small amounts of material so you want to try to avoid that if at all possible so that's why I'm, I've been getting it close using the block and then using the file after to kind of confirm that you saw we had very little little work to do after we'd actually used the block. So the reason the sandpaper doesn't do 100% of a job is because there is, anytime you, you hit metal with a hammer, you're creating like very small minor abrasions in the surface. And you know, sandpaper is never going to remove that. So file will, and file will also confirm whether or not it's straight. This can be deceiving at times. So the file is kind of the, the final judge and jury as to whether or not a panel is straight. And I've been using files now on for doing body work for, I guess, 10 years now. I still haven't managed to uh, file.
by a hole in a panel, whether it be on a modern car or on a classic car. Um, obviously, if you're conscious of what you're doing, then uh, you're not going to have issues with it. If you're just like digging in and going to town, then uh, yeah, it's probably not uh, not ideal. We're not trying to remove the high spots. We're not trying to do any of that. We're trying to get it close before we even touch it with a file and then use the file to get that last like 1%. Back in the days when before Bondo, you know, this is the way you fix things. You would maybe use a little bit of lead on hard to reach areas, but the majority of it, you know, guys could just do this like in and out. And so obviously you get stuff going on in a production body shop setting and guys are gonna cheat the system a bit. So what they would do, and actually the factories did this as well, the manufacturers when they were doing stuff, they would, instead of using the file to get it straight, they would go right to a big body grinder with like 36 grit or pretty coarse disc on it. And they would just use that grinder to actually grind the surface smooth. Now the problem with that is you remove material very, very quickly with a grinder. So I've, I've run into a lot of repairs on old cars where it was done this way. And then at that point, the metal is like thin to the point where you have no choice, but you're gonna be putting Bondo on it. So um, it's better to have Bondo on it than to just continue using the file and just thinning the metal even more. Um, if you're doing like a concourse car or whatever, then you you would have to basically remake the whole panel because at that point it would be ruined. So, but for the junk we work on, we can kind of work around it and just sculpt stuff out of Bondo if it's been damaged like that. But this is definitely uh, a no-no. Very careful with this. All I use this for is removing file marks. And it also, once the disc gets a little dull, it actually acts as like a shrinking disc and if there's any minor surface imperfections, it'll kind of act to level all that out. But we're talking like, you know, a few thou, not like a quarter inch or whatever. So I'll show you an example here of uh, this having been done at the factory. So on these, uh, these cabs here, this was the first year for a full one piece cab. Um, and there's actually a welded seam going through the cab here right from factory and on the other side you can actually see the the grinder marks through the paint but on this side you can't really make them out so but on the inside here on the inside of the cab you can see where the seam is and this is very common on vehicles in the 1920s and 1930s what they would do is they would have two sections of metal because they weren't able to stamp the whole thing in one piece and so one piece of one side would be positively charged and the other side would be negatively charged and then they'd be in a huge jig and they would be forced together and it would arc weld the seam together and so you get this kind of rough seam on the inside and then on the outside they would just take a big body grinder and they would grind that seam smooth sometimes they would do a little bit of lead on the edges or wherever it kind of messed up but for the most part it was all just metal finished at the factory and uh, if you ever see these seams on the inside of old cars it's very common on the back of sedans through the center there'd be a seam on each side and uh, roof panels stuff like that there would be these seams and uh, anywhere you see a seam like that the metal is always going to be thinner than the rest of coming come across it plenty of times before you try welding next to that and and it's like almost like tin foil but uh, then again it lasted you know 80 90 years so i guess it is what it is definitely not ideal way of doing it but that's just the way they did it back then and uh, i think on this side you can also see in here you can still see the little pick marks and stuff where they had a low spot and they took their their pick hammer and, and pounded that up. So it's kind of interesting. You can see they kind of knocked down some slag there or whatever. That's just but the way it was done. Not uh, pretty common. They would also do that if there was damaged panels on the assembly line or whatever, just knock it out real quick and grind away. So uh, not, uh, not really good practice, but again, like I said, this stuff lasts 80, 90 years. So uh, it is what it is, right?
just be conscious if you come across that on a car and you're trying to do any file work or whatever you probably don't want to don't want to be filing that um it's already going to be sent so just thought i'd show that kind of an interesting thing and yeah, if anybody knows what this there's a special name for this process that they used um I, I can't remember it off the top of my head so if anybody knows let me know in the comments pretty interesting how they uh did the seams and stuff back then uh by the time we got to the the 40s and 50s they would they were basically just lap welding everything and then just pounding it in and filling it with lead but uh before then they were trying to i guess do a little nicer job but obviously it probably took longer in the assembly line so that's why they went to just leading everything so the purpose of the file is to confirm that the panel is straight as well as remove those small surface abrasions from the hammer and dolly process. That's all we're doing with that. Purpose of the grinder, body sander, whatever you want to call it, is to remove the marks that were left behind from the file. So it's just like uh, polishing paint on a car. Um, you start out, you know, with the coarser grit and then you just work your way up until the goal here is to get a surface that uh, is uh, free of scratches that can be primed over so typically 80 or 180 grit or whatever primer will cover that no problem so we do this we do this then we just take our uh, 80 grit on our orbital sander and we sand it with that and then uh, that's a surface that can be primed so just removing the scratches from each step is all we're doing there. We're not using this to remove like material or huge imperfections or whatever. Obviously there is a very small amount, any kind of sanding or any kind of filing or, you know, using a grinder, you you are creating a hazard of removing material. So there is a very small amount that is lost from this, but there's really no no perfect process here because people will say, well, if you're doing that, why wouldn't you just put the Bondo on and uh, call it a day? Well, in order for Bondo to stick, you do have to put a bunch of scratches in the panel to actually get that to adhere. Bondo requires mechanical adhesion, which means there has to be some pretty decent scratches in the surface. You're putting scratches in the surface, you're again removing material so no matter what one of the pet peeves is I see you know guys talking garbage about this but then they take this and use one of these to prepare the surface for Bondo this gouges the metal this removes material very quickly and it creates a very uneven surface you know I use this for grinding welds and for if there's like rust where I'm going to be welding I'll clean it off of that but I don't go over the panel once the metal has been attacked with this it's essentially ruined and if you saw the videos where I did that fender I did a comparison between this and the file to see which removed material quickly and if you take this to a high spot on a panel that's it you know this was it basically made a hole within seconds I've also seen this used for guys are metal finishing and I, I hate that term i'm sorry about using it in the title but uh um you know you gotta get use the proper keywords or whatever to get views but it's it's something that's been used to the point where it's lost all of its original meaning um apparently these days it just means metal finishing means it, it's in bare metal and you're finished with it. it it doesn't matter if it needs a quarter inch of bondo or whatever it's just if you say it's metal finished then it is so uh, you see just like this being used and abused and just like grinding and grinding and grinding the, the metal and trying to create this this illusion that it's straight when in reality you're just damaging it further like so i don't get it but whatever you know you've all done things that we're not proud of but uh <laughs> i just don't get uh, how you can, well, I don't know. Like I said, the term's been used to the point where it's, it's lost its original meaning and it, it's just a stupid, it, it doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, metal finished means quarter inch of Bondo, I guess. So whatever. Again, 
we are using this to prep the surface, whether we're putting on Bondo or whether we're cleaning up file marks. Now, if we're using it to clean up file marks, the surface is already flat. And, you know, if you've ever done body work on a car, you know, when you put the Bondo on and you have those marks or whatever from the trowel, and then you go to sand it and when you first start sanding, the marks come up. It's easy to sand because you're just removing that, those high spots, those very small high spots. And then as you get down on the panel, it gets harder and harder to sand and there's more and more friction and it's harder to remove material. Well, it's basically the same thing with this. Now, if we're using this to prep a surface for Bondo application, the surface is gonna have you know, highs and lows, ideally very minor ones, but they're gonna be there nonetheless. So you pass over a high spot with this, you're gonna remove that very quickly. Now, if you're going over this, now if you're using this on a surface that's already been leveled out, then it's very difficult to actually, you know, remove material unless you're just holding in one spot. But if you're going over the whole thing evenly, holding it with even pressure, you know, you're not removing anything other than the marks that were created by the file. So it's just something to be aware of. Again, like I said, there's no perfect process and this isn't rocket science here. We're just fixing junk old vehicles. We're not building spaceships or going to Pebble Beach or anything like that. Doing Pebble Beach cars is, is a totally different thing. And we're just, we're not getting into that. I am trying to get better to the point where there's guys that can do you know, metal finishing without a file at all, but I'm just not there and uh, don't know if I ever will be or if I care to be. But uh, anyways, that's that.